Did you know that the Elder Scrolls Online is 10 years old? Yeah, I could barely believe it either. And to celebrate that, I flew out to Amsterdam. Not for that reason, or that reason, but because the city was playing host to this. The Elder Scrolls Online 10-year celebration is a chance for fans and developers to come together and revel in their shared love of this MMO. Another please. And while I was out there, I got to speak to Zenimax Online Studios about how the game first came into being. And it was very much our idea, was very much an idea of its time. I remember the first pitch we had to, to BGS and they were like, you want to what? Really? What? As well as why the passionate community keeps coming back for more. That is what sets this game apart. That's the success that makes it worthwhile for 10, 20 and maybe 50 years plus. This is Elder Scrolls Online at 10. ZeniMax has treated fans of ESO to thousands of hours of new chapter expansions, epic quests, and a huge space to create their own stories. I wanted to know more about that journey, so I got to speak to... Matt Fyroar, Studio Director at ZeniMax Online Studios. I'm Rich Lambert, the Creative Director on The Elder Scrolls Online. And I started things off with the big question. Why do you think that The Elder Scrolls Online has lasted for 10 years? It's pretty self-evident. It's a, it's a really good game. Is that seriously all he said? Yeah. Well, it's not enough for a video. We're going to have to go back for more. Yeah, okay. Is that, is that all right? All right, let's go. But it's a game that also keeps evolving. It's live service, which means it's been running continuously for 10 years. But because it's a live service game, we get to make it better, respond to community feedback. And if you look back over the 10 years of ESO's existence, we have not been afraid to make changes when, uh, when we needed to. And that's the key to our success. I think a lot of it comes down to the community and then the team listening to that community and building what they want. The community is the reason we're here today, talking about 10 years, right? Rich makes a really good point, actually. MMOs just don't exist without their community. But luckily for Zenimax, theirs is thriving. I've been playing ESO since before the beginning. I was there during the beta, I've got my little monkey, and yeah, a third of my life. <laughs> I have been a day one player. I have been here since launch. I started playing January 1st, 2020. It was a very monumentous day. Why do you think that ESO has lasted for 10 years? The community. The community. This is the community. But the game itself is designed so that you can play however you want. ESO fam is so strong and they are so wholesome and passionate. Just being at this event and seeing how excited everyone is, is it's a testament to how close-knit and dedicated and passionate this community is. I just like to help other people feel safe and included and um, like there's a place for them. You can be anything, you can be someone you can be in real life, you can be a wizard lizard. But no community is built overnight. These fans, they're all here to celebrate the 10th year anniversary of ESO, but really the work to bring this vision of Tamriel to life began long, long ago. The original vision for the game, remembering that we started in 2007, mm. like uh, to put that in perspective, Oblivion had launched a year and a half before. Fallout 3 hadn't come out yet, right? Skyrim was like four years away, and they, had, they weren't even, Bethesda wasn't even working on it. And it was very much our idea, was very much an idea of its time. We were very much making a Gen 2 type MMO with Elder Scrolls IP and stories and Dark Age of Camelot's PvP system. And then Skyrim came along. In its early days, ESO was really fortunate to have a very passionate fan base who were basically just hungry for as much ESO content as they could get their hands on. We then suddenly were the team that was going to launch the next Elder Scrolls game after Skyrim. And our original concept for the game wasn't going to work. It just totally wasn't going to work. It was Elder Scrolls with friends but it was also very much kind of the old school mentality of online. When we, we launched, players didn't really like that you were level gated. They didn't really like that you couldn't play with other people. They didn't really like that you couldn't go and explore because Elder Scrolls is really all about your free form exploration. 
And so we have to change that. We did a two-year pivot, and actually many of the systems that you know and love in ESO now came from that time when we were making it much more Elder Scrollsy. And obviously after launch, we got a lot of feedback that we needed to do more of that. <laughs> Now, ESO is full of stuff like that, which looks great, but Rich and Matt were both keen to point out that it's not just all about combat. Yeah. I might go in next. I say this all the time, but if you ask five Elder Scrolls Online players to describe Elder Scrolls Online, you'll get five different answers. You know, we've got our PvPers, our PvEers, you know, our solowers, our housing people. You can play a, a digital card game. We have one. New dungeons every year for co-op. We had a trial pretty much every year, and that's for the super hardcore players that really want to do lots of, lots of teamwork. And we try to make sure over the course of a year of updates that we deliver something for them. We don't do that by chance. We actually look at what players are doing in the game and what different cohorts of players are experiencing at any one time, and we kind of then time slice our development team into making you know, content that matches those. So it's not just about doing more damage, it's about more things to do, and because when it comes down to it, ESO is very much an Elder Scrolls virtual world. It's not just a game. Owning your own home in a virtual fantasy world is one thing, but the world that your home resides in is nothing without its history. Just so everyone knows, we take place about 700 years before the other Elder Scrolls games, and we picked that because that was a time in Elder Scrolls lore when there wasn't a whole lot known. It's hard for us to keep it all in our heads. I mean, we have a lore master for that. We have the Bethesda Game Studios group to, to help with that. We worked with Todd Howard. He wanted us to make sure we had a time period on the timeline that was ours. One of the biggest things we try to do when we're telling stories is we try to make sure that new players get the context of those stories. And if you're a veteran player, an existing player, we try to make sure that we recognize your accomplishments that you've, you've done as you've kind of progressed through the game. And so it's, it's this really interesting kind of balancing act that we have to go through with that. So while activities like crafting, housing, trading card games, even alchemy, are often seen as a means to an end in other MMOs, here players have actually found unique personalities for their player character through these activities. So Zenimax have got all these different players that come to ESO for very different reasons, but how do they cater to every single one of them with all of their yearly updates? That's really hard, because um, you can't please everybody all the time. Most of the new systems that we add aren't vertically powerful, like they don't add percentages into player power, they instead make the game broader. And all those systems intertwine at different parts of the game experience, like with housing, you can get extra special housing um, uh, chairs and pictures and uh, de decorations by completing con content. Since you don't want to go out and finish this zone because then you get the really cool Daedric artifact that you can put in your house, right? We do that on purpose to make sure that you can do these activities separately, but if you're just experiencing the game broad-based, you can dabble in everything and you'll always be rewarded. And that's another reason why fans are so invested. The game is absolutely dripping with lore and makes it easy for players to find their favorite stories and characters. Oh, I could fit this in my living room, I reckon. You know, ESO has been running for so long, we have fan favorite characters from previous chapters in the launch game that we can just bring back and players automatically know and love. As far as companions go, my go-to has been Sharp as Night, which is one of the more recent companions. Absolutely love him, the little quips here and there, just really, really vibe with him overall. I really love finding Mike the liar because he's always so cute and funny. You'll just find him randomly, so I love him. <laughs> However, Cadwell, obviously Sir Cadwell, who doesn't love Sir Cadwell, he is very loving. Um, but then again, if we go to Data Princess, Cheryl Gorath is absolutely amazing. I love searching out Maik the Liar, um, but I also have a soft spot for Stibbins. ESO's universal lore and history is deep and ever-changing, which is probably why the community absolutely love it. There's so much to explore and investigate. In fact, it's because of the community's sheer hunger for ESO's lore that the game underwent possibly the most important update ever. It was pretty clear that Elder Scrolls Online was promoted as a multiplayer social Elder Scrolls game. And it, when we launched, it wasn't really Elder Scrolls enough because it wasn't a virtual world in the sense that Skyrim is a virtual world and you can just go do anything. So that's why we led up to one Tamriel, which made the world levelless and you could do anything that you wanted. It took us two years to get there, but we did. Players didn't outright say make a levelless game. They were like, 
remove all these barriers from us playing with our friends and being able to explore and, and whatnot. And the other is, it's not social enough because it was an old school MMO design back then and you really couldn't group with anyone higher or lower than you in level and you couldn't chat with people in the other alliances and so one Tamriel also made it so you could group with anyone you wanted because levels weren't were meaningless and we killed two birds with one stone with that uh, with that one system and it made it instantly free feeling more virtual world like and you could just play with your friend that you had just gotten into the game even if you had been playing for two years. One Tamriel was a seismic shift, but in fairness, ESO has an update pretty much every year, like this year, for example, with Gold Road, which we'll get to a bit later on. But what I wanted to know right now was where do Zenimax even start when making a new chapter in such a massive game? Do we look back at what we've done so that when we do that next thing, it feels very different. So when you look at Necrom and Gold Road, Necrom is this kind of weird alien vibe. It's kind of cosmic horror. And then you look at what we did with Gold Road, and that is more kind of grounded in kind of traditional fantasy with this beauty of Athelia. And it's, it's a really interesting contrast, and it, it's something that keeps players on their toes, which is what we want. We look at the map, see what areas have, we haven't been to yet. Um, we think about the story we did the previous year, because we do chapters annually. Um, we think about, are we going to continue the story from the last chapter? Is this kind of a new, a new touch point? And all of those then lead to a story being developed and then looking at the zone and what kind of art are we going to need and what kind of terrain editing are we going to need. And then it's what we do best then. What stories are we going to tell there? So we do a little bit of that, but we also introduce new and interesting uh, flavors on the way. Uh, would you guys also like to see the dragon? All of these players were new players at some point. So how do you take a new player and make them just as dedicated as these guys? Well, it turns out that ESO's got a pretty neat trick for that one too. It's a game where you can play with anyone at any level and you can just make friends in such great ways. You can, you can craft gear for each other, you can join a guild and there's no restrictions on what character you want to be, what weapon you want to use. So I love the inclusivity and the way that you can just be all as one memories that we've made together. There's just something really wonderful about that camaraderie that transcends different kind of nationalities and cultures. And that's just something that uh, has been really special for me. And that's what ESO has, is the ability to play the way you want. If you want to do it solo, that, that is fine. But you can also go with your friends and do it too. Every zone in the game has fun solo content, story quests, but also including uh, what we call um, natural uh, kind of unforced grouping where you see something big happening like a dark anchor or you walk over to it people are fighting a bunch of a uh, bunch of enemies and you can just join in you don't know that but you're getting the benefits group benefits when you do that you're getting extra experience and, and you're if any of the people there are casting spells that help you they'll help you so we really wanted to make it organic that way and then teach you that it's okay to be around other players and you can actually be stronger. And then yes, then that leads to co-op dungeons and then eventually to trials. This organic shepherding of solo players into scenarios where they're now cooperating with other users is a really compelling gateway into the juicier parts of the game. And of course, I mean, it's win-win really. The players feel like they've gone on this earned journey of discovery into their new favorite game. The developers, well, they get to foster a thriving community through the unbreakable bonds of co-op play. Genius, really. In an ESO, I had all my friends in the same platform, so it was always easy to connect. And I also started meeting a lot of new friends. And I actually met my boyfriend there. So uh, yeah, that is very special to me. A couple of weeks after my husband and I just started dating, and it was the first thing we started to do together as a brand new couple. Uh, and we've really incorporated ESO into our lives since then. And being part of the ESO stream team, it's just been an us thing. So it not only reminds me of all the community members and that those friends that became family, but it's also a big signifier of our relationship and where we started and you know our journey as a married couple versus this journey as a game. That's so lovely, I mean, that's literally couple goals, basically. <laughs> so that's 10 years done, but what about the next decade? We're not gonna slow down. I, I think if we look forward, you only have to look back to, to see what's gonna happen when we go forward, and that's that 
We're going to keep doing what works, and if it doesn't work, we'll change it. There's tons of things. We have tons of ideas uh, in where we want to go next, but I think kind of our next big focus, you know, is, is on technology. You know, the, the engine, we've been working on this game since 2007, so 17 years now. Um, there's lots of things we're working on with that. If you look back, you'll see we are not afraid to make major changes when major changes are needed. So I don't see any of that happening you know, tomorrow, but are, are, is the industry going to change? Are players' habits going to change? Of course. And we'll, we'll, we'll pivot with them and we'll keep uh, doing what we do. One change that ESO has always added to their game is making the ESO journey bigger and more customizable. Luckily, their newest chapter, Gold Road, not only expands the world once again, but also adds a whole new system to make combat more personalized than ever before. And so Gold Road adds, of course, a great story, which I'm not going to spoil, uh, but it's about a new Daedric, uh, new Daedric Prince, which, we, uh, which uh, the fan base knows, in a beautiful new uh, part of the world. And we're adding a new system called Scribing that lets you create new abilities and modify your existing abilities. So again, making the game broader. Scribing helps with that a lot, right? There's over 4,000 unique combinations to play with in that system, which is just bonkers. You can add a shield bash, you know, to shield bash. You can make that heal yourself when you do it, right? Because that's in the laws of different abilities in the game that already do shield bash and heal. Um, and we have the idea in the game of how much healing you can take per second ticked in the game. And as long as you don't go over that and make it overpowered, then why not have a shield bash that heals you if you're a tank and you want to do that? It's going to let them be super flexible. You know, if they've got this build and say they're missing a particular buff, and they don't really have a good way of getting that buff, well, through the scribing system, they can do that. It's these sorts of brave decisions to shake up the gameplay that will no doubt keep ESO relevant for its current and future audiences. And what I find really reassuring is that ZeniMax want to bring the community along with them on a journey to mold and change the future of ESO to reflect the desires of the fans. Growing alongside them is paramount. You're gonna have to listen to them and be receptive to their issues. And it definitely doesn't hurt in giving players incredible reasons to come back year after year. ESO is always giving players something to look forward to with its DLCs and expansions. And these updates are full to the brim of meaningful content that you just don't want to miss. So with that new chapter and the future of ESO pretty secure thanks to the ability to adapt to what the players want and need, now seems like the perfect time to jump into The Elder Scrolls Online when Gold Road hits Xbox consoles on June 18th. It's always an absolute blast being able to give you guys deeper insights into the games that you love, so make sure you drop down in the comments where should we fly to next and who should we be speaking to. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss those videos and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!